Welcome to the Rewriting Naruto series part 32. This is a series of videos where I rewrite Naruto making changes to improve the story for my personal taste. And let's say when we reach 4000 likes in this video, I'll release part 33. Naruto, Sakura, Kakashi, and Neji stand before Tsunade in her office. Shizuna stands next to her, looking shocked. The shock comes from the report Kakashi delivers about the mission the Land of Whirlpools they just returned from. As Kakashi finishes telling the Hokage everything that happened, Tsunade's expression is grim. Very well, you did a good job, all things considered, she says. Hinata has already been detained by the Ambu Black Ops, and she's being kept in the most secure prison cell in the Leaf Village. Good job concealing her when you arrived here. It's good that you avoid a crisis, especially right now, so do not mention the details about Hinata to anyone. I will leak some of the information about the mission and not mention Hinata so that people know what you were up to. It will no doubt be a tough blow to us when everybody hears that the heiress of one of the most powerful clans of the village acted against the Hokage's wishes, but at least we've got some time to prepare. Did she reveal any further information the journey back. No, we questioned her a lot, especially Naruto, but she didn't utter a single word while we were returning, Kakashi says. Damn it. She fooled me completely. I would have never imagined she was a spy. When she said she wanted to stay away from the missions to focus on the affairs of the Hyuga clan, I didn't even question it. And just let her do as she pleased, Tsunade says. For all that's worth, Lady Tsunade, she had us all fooled. Even the entire Hyuga clan as far as I know, Neji says. Naruto had never seen Neji looking so dismal. He had been that way ever since Hinata assaulted him. His gaze was distant and unfocused, his voice shaky. The trauma of being tortured by his cousin took a toll on him. But Neji can't be blamed. Naruto himself still couldn't believe that was the real Hinata. Using the Hyuga Forbidden Seal? Killing Aki? Trying to kill Kakashi Sensei? It has to be some sort of genjutsu. She would never do any of these things. Granny Tsunade, if you let me speak with Hinata, just me alone, I'm sure I can sort the situation out. No, it's too risky, Naruto. We don't know what she's capable of. Besides, you're biased in this matter. Your emotions will get in the way. But that's not the real Hinata! I'm sure of it! There's something wrong with her! Naruto, she is a member of the Root Ambu. You cannot trust her facade. Assume the Hinata you knew no longer exists. But how? How is that possible? The brainwashing methods of the Root Ambu are very effective, Naruto. Then why do you let them exist? You're the Hokage, do something about it! I wish it was that easy. Danzo has too much political power, spies and influence around the land of fire. Ever since he founded the Root Ambu, if we fought against them, a civil war would ensue, and the Leaf Village would most likely be destroyed. Naruto sweats. The bent-up anger he had suppressed during the entire mission in the land of Whirlpools begins to surface. He just doesn't make any sense! Hinata has to be under a genjutsu or being blackmailed or something. She's not that type of person. She's not a murderer. Calm down, Naruto. We were all shocked by what happened, but getting angry will not solve anything, Sakura says. He touches his shoulder in a tender way, softening his inner pain. Hinata has been screened for every sort of genjutsu or methods of controlling her mind by Ibiki and his team. She was not being controlled by any type of chakra, and Ibiki will be carrying an interrogation with Hinata to get more answers, Tsunade says. That guy. He'll probably torture her or something. And you'll let this happen. Naruto, I know it's tough, but Hinata betrayed the Leaf Village here. You have to understand, Lady Tsunade, Shizune says. One thing is to operate under Danzo's orders without my knowledge, but Hinata tried to kill Kakashi. That is unacceptable, Tsunade says. Unfortunately, she is now considered an enemy of the Leaf Village and a threat to us. We have to act accordingly, especially given the current situation, Kakashi says. It's likely that the capture of one of Danzo's prime spies will prompt him to act and the office door opens. Danzo Shimura enters the room. His calm demeanor strikes a sharp contrast with how uneasy the others are. Tsunade, I request you release Hinata Hyuga from her incarceration immediately. It doesn't matter what you do to her, she will never divulge any information. You, what did you do to Hinata? Naruto shouts. Danzo doesn't even acknowledge his presence. Don't make me laugh, Danzo. Hinata almost got my entire squad killed. She also tried to kill Kakashi. 
working. She will remain in prison and you'll be the next if you continue to push your luck, Tsunari says. Hinata's mission was to protect the leaf and the land of fire from the chakra anomaly. She quite literally saved all your lives by neutralizing the threat. If she attacked any of your squad members, it was because they stood on her way. Primal hatred bursts within Naruto. He can feel his stomach burning just by looking at that wrinkled face. I understand that those of you who play being a shinobi have difficulty appreciating what Hinata just did, but I ask you to reconsider. Hinata is one of the most important tools of this village. Naruto lunges towards Danza with amazing speed, grabbing him by the neck, crashing him against the wall of the office which cracks with the impact. Naruto's nails are sharp, his whiskers are pronounced, and his eyes are red with slits for pupils. You tell me what you did to Hinata right now! Naruto squeezes the old man's neck. He smiles in utter disgust. It's such a shame that the vessel of the Nine Tails is such a subpar individual. Those who cannot suppress their emotions cannot be called shinobi. I swear I'll kill you! Naruto! Sakura and Shizune scream at the same time as Kakashi motions towards him. Tsunade raises her hand in a silent gesture, telling them not to interfere. What did you do to her? Everything she did was on her own volition. I only trained and transformed her into a perfect shinobi. One who protects this village from the shadows. One who can do what's necessary for the good of the village without asking anything in exchange. It's unfortunate she was found out. I bet you never even suspected beforehand. She really was the perfect spy. Pretending to love you, I am sure you believed her. And now, by not releasing her, you will do a disservice to the- Naruto explodes. Danzo's neck, crushing it with his hand. Danzo's body falls on the ground. The entire room grows silent in disbelief. Naruto snaps out of his rage, realizing what he just did. Danzo kicks Naruto, sending him flying. He crashes against Tsunari behind the Hokage's desk, knocking them both to the ground as a hundred sheets of paper that were on the table fly up in the air. Danzo stands there, his expression calm as his corpse disappears. No matter. I came here knowing I wouldn't succeed. After all, it's unreasonable to expect sheep to act rationally. He leaves the room as Naruto stands up to pursue him. Kakashi stops Naruto, using a suppressing ceiling jutsu to contain the Nine Tails' chakra. Calm down, Naruto. He provoked you on purpose. He wanted to see how far you would go, Kakashi says. He's right. Dan's the calculating type. He wouldn't provoke you for no reason, Tsunari says, standing up. But how did he do that? I was certain Naruto killed him. If it was a genjutsu, I would have known, Sakura says. Did you see anything strange about his chakra, Neji? Kakashi says. He's caught off guard by the question. Sorry, I... I didn't activate my Byakugan. I see. I wonder if he had anything to do with his right arm. What do you mean? Sakura asks. Normally, he walks around with metallic sealing implements around his right arm. He didn't have those today. Only bandages. Also, how does he already know Hinata was captured? Shizune says. Unfortunately, the Rutambo is quite competent. No doubt they have means to get that information. Hopefully, they won't leak it out to the village, but I suppose it's out of her hands. Shizune, there will be a change of plans. I will be leading Anko's squad on their mission to the land of crystals. What? what But Lady Tsunade, why would you go personally? Anko is going to lead the mission. The leader of the Leaf Village must display strength in times like these. Most of all, after yesterday's attack on the Waterfall Village. What happened there? Naruto asks. The Akatsuki, of course. They destroy most of the Waterfall Village and capture their tail beast. I've sent an entire battalion of ninjas to provide provide humanitarian aid, but the damage is catastrophic as far as the reports go. So I must show that will not be intimidated. And what's happening in the Land of Crystals anyway? It's a diplomatic mission. Ambassadors of the Leaf and Stone will meet there and be mediated by the Snow Village. The objective is to ensure the neutrality of the Land of Crystals. Lady Tsunari, do you really think leaving the village right now is the best idea? Sakura asks. Especially with Danzo acting up, Kakashi says. Yes, I am sure of it. This is the best course of action for the village. Besides, if anything happens, I have you. All of you, Tsunari says, pointing to everybody in the room. Shizune, inform Team Anko that I'll be joining them in their mission to the Land of Crystals. We'll go as soon as I see Team Kakashi in the hospital. Sakura Hill is just fine during the trip back. We don't have to go to the hospital, Granny Tsunade. That's not the reason, Naruto. I will examine you to determine if you contracted the chakra disease. Or did you already forget the risks of the Land of Whirlpool's mission?
A masked Rutambo shinobi kneels in front of Danzo. They are in the Leaf Village underground. Fu, let Hinata know we will not be breaking her out yet, Danzo says. But Hinata, I thought she was fundamental for the plan to work, the masked figure says. Her capture was unfortunate, but I will make it work to our advantage. Extracting her now will only raise suspicion. She will never break, there's nothing to worry about. And what of the Hokage? The slug princess will be leaving for the land of crystals. So, it worked. Yes, I took a gamble. The Hugo Brett was in there, but he seemed too shell-shocked to use his Byakugan. Now, Tsunade, Jiraiya, and Might Guy are away from the village. The only one we'll have to worry about is Kakashi Hatake. Should I assemble an assassination squad? No, I'll deal with him myself. I see. So the time has really come. Is this wise, Lord Danzo? He's still out there. He could still- He will be preoccupied in the foreseeable future. Everything is coming together for me to finally become Hokage. Itachi Uchiha stares at an open field under the rain. His Sharingan eyes are calm and collected as always, overlooking the vast valley below. Distant explosions of water and steam send shockwaves through the valley. A great five-tailed white horse appears in the middle of the chasm, clashing against a massive wave of water. A few minutes later, Kisame arrives, carrying Han, the Jinchuriki of the Five Tails with his Samehada. At this point, we get the same scene as in the original when Kisame captures the Jinchuriki of the Four Tails, except that in the rewrite, it's gonna be Han, the Five Tails instead, because the Four Tails was captured back in part one. And we will also get the scene when the Akatsuki reconvenes as holograms, and the leader informs the rest that Kakuzu Hidan and Orochimaru have died. The addition here is that the leader sets up a place for Itachi and Kisami to meet with Deidara and Tobi so that they can seal the Five and the Seven Tails into the Ghetto Mazo at the same time. Itachi and Kisami then set towards that location. Itachi looks at the sky after hearing Sasuke kill Orochimaru. Having second thoughts? about having left the kid alive? Kisame asks with a smile carrying Han. No, this was always the plan. Oh, and what if he actually kills you? Aren't you afraid? Itachi smirks. I should have known better. There's no one in this world you'd be afraid of. <laughs> Tsunade finishes her examination on Team Kakashi. She used her medical ninjutsu to look for traces of lethargic chakra or disturbances within their bodies. Good news, you're clear. No signs of the chakra disease. Kakashi, Sakura, Naruto, and Neji give a collective sigh of relief. Before I go though, there's something else I need to tell you. Something important. Orochimaru is dead. Sasuke Uchiha killed him. Naruto and Sakura caught off guard. They stare at Tsunade in complete shock, not believing what they hear. Are you... Are you serious, Granny Tsunade? Yes, it's been confirmed in multiple information channels. Naruto laughs in glee, while Sakura sheds a tear. I knew it! I knew Orochimaru couldn't break him! So then this means he is... Sakura says, crying. He's coming back home! Naruto says, rocking back and forth with enthusiasm. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem that way. Tsunade says, Why? Why not? Orochimaru's gone, so he should come back home! Sasuke is obsessed with revenge. He's not coming back if Itachi is still at large. Kakashi says, Says. Yes, he's likely planning to infiltrate the Akatsuki to kill his own brother. Tsunade says, So we should capture Itachi. If we have Itachi, then Sasuke would come back to us. Sakura says, Every squadron already has standing orders to capture any Akatsuki members they encounter. Tsunade says, Yeah, they're not a loose lipped bunch, that's for sure. Judging by the ones we've encountered so far, it would be too dangerous to capture them alive or intact. Kakashi says, Well, then what are we gonna do? We keep on searching patiently until we run into to Itachi or Sasuke. But why don't you send a specific team to do that? We should go after them, we should search them for real, not just trying our luck? It's not that simple, Naruto. We don't know where Sasuke or Itachi are, and we cannot get that information easily. Besides, it's more likely that they're not in the Land of Fire, which diminishes our ability to search for anyone, Tsunade says. Yeah, last time we went to another country searching for Sasuke, we almost started a diplomatic disaster, Sakura says. Exactly. I don't want to repeat what happened in the Land of grass, so we'll be more careful. I dispatched our strongest shinobi to look for Sasuke and the Akatsuki. Once we get intel about their location, we'll be able to send a battalion to a focused area, meaning we won't just be bumbling around foreign nations. Who did you send? Well, Jiraiya, of course. There's no one better for the job. If there's anyone who can bring an Akatsuki or even Sasuke back without killing them, it's gonna be him. So for now, stay put. I should be back from the Land of Crystals in a 
about a week or so. Overwhelming powerlessness crashes down on Naruto. Once again, he feels his stomach burning as his arms shake. First Hinata, now Sasuke. Naruto can only sit and watch, unable to help his friends. He pants and sweats, wanting to move, wanting to do something. Naruto, calm down, Sakura says, touching his shoulder again. I know it sucks. I want to go after Sasuke as much as you do, but I have to listen to Lady Tsunade. Naruto's flare of anger ceases once again. More importantly, we'll be ready when the time comes to make sure we succeed, Kakashi says. Tsunade leaves the hospital with Neji and Kakashi, but Naruto has something else to do here. He roams through the hallways looking for something. Naruto, what are you doing? You shouldn't wonder about a hospital, Sakura says. She followed him to make sure Naruto wouldn't do anything stupid. I want to visit Captain Yamato and Choji. They got hurt, you know. Sakura smiles. She asks a nurse for their room number and finds out Choji has already been discharged, so they head towards Yamato's room. When Naruto and Sakura enter the room, they freeze in utter shock. Yamato's appearance is alien. He doesn't look like the same person anymore. The entire skin that wraps itself around his head looks like molten wax that hardened, slick, but full of cracks and bumps. There's not a single hair left in Anywhere. The skin seems so thin and fragile that it feels as though it could be blown off his skull by a gentle breeze. Yamato's eyes bulge out of the burnt sockets and his nose practically doesn't exist anymore. The captain looks at Naruto and Sakura who are unable to utter a word. Look at the bright side. I'm still more handsome than you, Naruto. Captain Yamato, how are you? Naruto asks as he sits next to him with Sakura, alive. Lady Tsunade saved me, but according to her, I pulled through because of the first Hokage's DNA in my body, and also because you sent me a hat on that frog of yours, so thanks. I'm sorry, it's my fault you ended up like this. If I had- We all knew the risks. I more than anyone knew the Rasen Shuriken wasn't a completed jutsu. Trust me, I would love to blame you, but it wasn't your fault. You were actually the reason we won at all. But if I hadn't been so- Seriously, shut the hell up. I don't want your self-deprecating pity. A shinobi risks his life and well-being to complete the mission. This is all I did. I'm pretty sure Lady Tsunade knows techniques to improve your appearance though. I could even try to learn them to help you out, Sakura says. There's no need to waste the time and resources of our ninjas, especially the Hokage, to perform cosmetic surgery on me. I just lost my looks, no big deal. I'll be discharged tomorrow morning and I'll be back at 100% strength. And as I said, I still look better than Naruto. I wanted to ask you something then. When you have time, could you oversee my training again? Yeah, what do you need from me? Naruto is taken aback. Yamato didn't even hesitate. He was sure he would have to insist a lot for Yamato to help him. Well, there are some jutsus that I want to master, so I'll be using the Shadow Clone training technique. I need you to suppress Nine Tails' chakra if it leaks out. Not a problem. I'm used to that by now. As Naruto and Sakura leave the room, Yamato stares at Naruto's back, remembering what Kakashi told the boy. I believe you are the only one who is capable of surpassing the fourth Hokage. Somehow, he's beginning to believe them as well. The sun sets, and Shino Aburame, Kiba Inuzuka, Akamaru, and Anko Mitarashi wait near the main Konoha gate. Captain Anko, who are we waiting for? Shouldn't we be heading to the land of crystals already? Kiba says, as Akamaru barks next to him. There's been a change of plans. Someone else is joining our squad, Anko says. Ah, we can handle this. We don't need anyone else dragging us down. Is that what you think I'll do, Kiba? Tsunade says, appearing behind him. He turns around, eyes opened wide. Uh, Lady Tsunade, you're coming with us? For real? Indeed I am. C Captain Anko, why didn't you tell us? I wanted to see your surprise faces, Anko says laughing. Serves you right for underestimating who was coming with us, Kiba. Shino says, completely unfazed. Shino's outfit is different though. He carries a large gourd on his back and several smaller ones around his waist. Oh, I get it. As I'll be the next Hokage, Lady Tsunade will oversee the mission and give me guidance so I can lead the Leaf Village properly in the future, Kiba says, petting Akamaru. Please stop embarrassing yourself. Lady Tsunade is coming with us because she doesn't trust us to fulfill the mission ourselves. Oh, that's not true, Shino. It's just that, given the current situation of the world, the Hokage should make an appearance at such an important event. We must assure everyone that the Lee village remains strong. Regardless, we have our mission to meet with the ambassadors of the Stone Village and ensure the neutrality of the Land of Crystals. Tsunade points to the distance. Let's go! She yells. Alright, yeah! Let's go, Akamaru! Shino nods and Anko smiles as they see set to the land of crystals. 
Sasuke Uchiha dashes through the forest. He's going towards Tahuna City. He sweats and pants, trying to go as fast as he can, but the fight against Jiraiya tired him out. At least the cool night breeze is pleasant and refreshing. Sasuke hopes Kara and Sugetsu and Jugo manage to find Kado, the man who may know where Itachi is, in Tahuna City. As he finally arrives, he notices this is a very large city, probably one of the largest in the land of Hot Springs. Not a shinobi village, but there is a local police force and some Hot Spring ninjas roam the area. It doesn't take too long for Team Hebi to find Sasuke. Kara no doubt used her abilities to locate his chakra. So, did you find Kado? Sasuke says. Now, the guy left town early this morning. We never even had a chance to catch him. Sugetsu says. Sasuke, are you alright? Where's the sonin? Jugo says. I took care of him. He won't be coming after us anytime soon. But the leaf may act more forcefully from now on. Karin blushes, reveling at how cool Sasuke is. Defeating a legendary shinobi like that without even getting hurt? So, so, did you find where he went, at least? Back to the snow village, I presume? No, he's actually going to a stupid little country I've never heard of before. What was it again? I can't remember. You're so stupid, Suigetsu, not knowing basic geography. He's going to the land of crystals, Karin says. Sasuke opens his eyes wide, clenching his hands into fists. Why there? Apparently he's going to mediate a diplomatic meeting between the leaf stone and the land of crystals. It's probably a bad idea to go there. It's gonna be full of vultures. No. Where we're going. Kado is the only real lead we have on Itachi. Sasuke never expected he would return to that place. He would be bringing his new team, which he leads, to where he first led in his life. To the place where he began to restore the Uchiha clan. Sasuke, have you been there? Jugo asks. No, never. Naruto and Sakura walk through the streets of the Leaf Village during the night. Sakura asked Naruto to go out for dinner with her. She needed to cheer Naruto up. He had been through a lot these past few days. Even still, Naruto didn't look too happy. His gaze was overly serious, and his posture was stiff. You know, Naruto, just a few years ago, you'd kill someone to go on a date with me. Cheer up, Sakura says, nudging him. Seriously, beating yourself up won't help. If you want to talk to me about anything, really, or if you need my help, don't be afraid to ask. Thanks, Sakura. But this is not a date. Well, I didn't mean it in a romantic way. We're friends. Honestly, you're probably my best friend right now. Naruto finally smiles. Well, that made me feel a little bit better. His smile doesn't last too long, however. This is the worst position for Naruto. Not being able to act is worse than total humiliation for him. Where are we going, by the way? I figured you'd take me to Ichiraku. We're going to the steakhouse. I want to see how Choji's doing. We didn't get a chance to see him in the hospital. I see. So I alone am not enough to entertain you. No, no, Sakura, I didn't mean it that way. We don't have to sit with Choji or anything, I just want to check on him. If you want to go somewhere else, I'm fine with it too. I'm kidding. You're a considerate guy, Naruto. But how do you know Choji's gonna be in the steakhouse? I mean, it's Choji. Where else is he gonna be? That's a fair point. Sure enough, when Naruto and Sakura enter the steakhouse, Choji is in there. He doesn't see them coming because his back is turned towards them, and his teammates accompany him. Ino sits next to Choji, while Shikamaru sits in front of them, facing Naruto and Sakura as they enter. Shikamaru's expression is a little off. He oozes more annoyance than he usually does. Naruto had never really seen his face like that. It looks like he's having a physical reaction to eating something spicy and trying to hold in his pain. But when Shikamaru notices Naruto and Sakura entering the establishment, his eyes open wide. It's almost as though Shikamaru just saw the second coming of the Sage of Six Paths. He stands up with a brisk motion and beelines towards Naruto and Sakura. Hey, Shikamaru, what's up? How are you? Naruto, Sakura, please. I can't bear it anymore. Please kill me. Shikamaru says, leaning against Naruto as if he's about to pass out. Shikamaru, what's what's going on? Please come sit with us. I need someone to share my pain. Shikamaru looks absolutely desperate. Naruto and Sakura stare at each other. They're completely clueless. Well, yeah, Shikamaru, don't worry. We'll join you. Just don't die, please. Sakura says, shrugging her shoulders at Naruto, who's tapping Shikamaru's back, trying to improve his mood. The three sit down at the table with Choji and Ino, facing the two. Hey guys, how are ya? Choji says, biting his barbecue with ferocity. Ino greets them with a kind smile. Their mood contrasts Shikamaru's mood so much. Naruto and Sakura stare at him, trying to find out what on earth he was talking about. He still looks annoyed beyond belief, though. So, Choji, how are you feeling? I'm sorry about what happened in the fight. It was my fault you got hurt. Nah, don't worry, Naruto. You did great in there, Choji says, blushing. Ino chuckles, looking at Choji. He lost a lot of weight in that fight, but he's almost 
getting back to normal, Eno says, feeding Choji with her chopsticks. Sakura looks at that. There's something going on here. You did really well in that fight. Eno tells Choji, ignoring the rest of the table, as she feeds him again with her chopsticks. Choji hugs Eno's waist with his bare arm. Ah, well, it wasn't that big of a deal, he says, as Eno touches his thigh. Shock downs on Sakura. She looks at Shikamaru, who's staring down at his feet. Hands trembling. Eyes flashing annoyance. Naruto seems unfazed, not really paying attention. Eno then whispers something in Choji's ear, prompting him to laugh. Hey, Eno, Choji, are you guys dating? Yes, we're dating! Eno shouts as Choji looks at her, blushing furiously but with a dumb smile on his face. You shouldn't have asked. Chikamaru's just jealous because he hasn't seen Tamari for a long time now. Eno says, chuckling. Shut up! I don't even know what you're talking about! Chikamaru says, blushing all of a sudden. I see. I'm happy for you guys. Don't encourage them, Naruto. They have been nothing but insufferable for the last few days since Choji left the hospital. Seriously, you know, I thought your type were guys like Sasuke. Is it just because Choji saved you? Shut up! I, I just realized Choji was the right guy for me, that's all. It took me a while, but I finally understood, okay? Yeah, Shikamaru, don't try to interfere with our love, Choji says, as Ino pulls his face towards hers and rubs her cheek against Choji's cheek. Ah, uh, stop that! This is a family restaurant! Seriously, what's wrong with women? Oh yeah? You think this is wrong? Then check this out! Ino Ino pulls Choji and kisses him with passion. Shikamaru almost dies of secondhand embarrassment as Sakura blushes as well. I don't think I can handle this anymore. Seriously. Shikamaru says. Ino laughs as Choji is completely silent. He's in a trance. His posture is so loose it appears Ino's kiss liquefied him. Sakura gives a conflicted smile. On the one hand, she's happy for Ino and Choji and it's also a good thing that Ino will no longer be disputing Sasuke with her. On the other hand, she just feels jealous that they found love and the only thing Sakura's been able to find was misery. Do you understand me now? It's like those two just hit puberty. What's puberty, Shikamaru? Shikamaru face bombs so loud the entire restaurant looks at them for an instant. Anyway, good job on the Land of Whirlpool's mission. We've heard you guys defeated a monster that fought against the first Hokage once. Pretty impressive. Everyone's talking about it. Maybe tonight it will finally promote you to Chunin, Naruto. Shikamaru says, trying to change the subject. I wouldn't count on it, Naruto says. Naruto's comment was on. Odd. Usually, it would prompt a more heated reaction from him. Shikamaru deduces Naruto is feeling down because of the news about Sasuke killing Orochimaru and not returning to the Leaf Village. Oh well, but seriously, the village is respecting you more, Naruto. I think you're really making an impression on people now. Oh, I suppose that's good. Naruto seems off. Maybe something happened in their latest mission. If Shikamaru doesn't know about it, then probably it's because he's not supposed to. Best not to prod them for any information. Shikamaru changes subject, and the group resumes their dinner. Naruto and Sakura order for themselves. The evening is awkward. Every time Naruto, Sakura, and Shikamaru try to talk to each other, they are interrupted by the making out sounds of Choji and Ino, who seem to be completely uncaring about the location they're in. Rain pours down the dark sky as Itachi and Kisame arrive at a large canyon in the land of rain. Kisame constantly drained the Five Tails' Jinchuriki chakra with Samehara as he carried him along their trip here. This made sure the Jinchuriki wouldn't wake up anymore. Hey! Hey! Itachi Senpai! Kisame Senpai! We're down here! Toby waves at them from the canyon below. You're late! Dater screams, pointing at them. It appears they beat us here, Itachi. <laughs> Itachi doesn't say anything. He jumps down and Kisame follows. A large clay bird sits next to Toby and Deidara, carrying the Jinchuriki of the Seven Tails. What was the reason for you being late, huh? I thought you never lost, Itachi. Deidara says, This isn't a race. Itachi says, not even looking at Deidara. Huh? We must enter the hideout. The leader is expecting us. Hey, you were the ones who were late here, huh? Itachi ignores Deidara once more, weaving hand signs and touching the stone wall of the canyon, opening a secret passage. Let's get going. Don't don't act like you can order us around. You haven't captured a single tail beast and I capture three, even though I joined the organization later than you. For someone so superior, you sure seem to be slacking off, almost as though you're not helping on purpose. Itachi narrows his eyes. The three tomoe of 
his Sharingan fused together, activating the Mangekyo Sharingan. That was no longer Dojutsu, but a force of nature. They would have felt pressure oozing off of Itachi, sheer killing intent. He wanted to face him, but his instinct screamed for him to step back, and he did so, hating himself for it. Need I remind you that my target is the Ninetales, a target you attempted to capture yourself and failed miserably. Furthermore, the Ninetales has to be the last tail be sealed regardless of the order of capture. Your straightforward, narrow-minded view of the world blinds your judgment. Daedra, I suggest you don't piss Itachi off. Remember what happened last time you two fought? <laughs> Daedra remembers something that was burned in his mind forever. For a brief instant, he sees the image of an almighty, beautiful deity looking down on him. Oh yeah, you think that's a bad idea, Kisame? You think so? <laughs> you know what, Itachi? I think it's time for us to finally- Senpai! 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 The Jinchuriki! She woke up! Toby says, pointing to Fu, who slowly opens her eyes. Fu's vision is blurry. Gathering all her strength, she focuses her gaze and sees the man who massacred her village. You. You pay for what you did. I swear to you. Green chakra begins to leak out of her body. Wait, wait, wait. Deirdre Senpai didn't mean to kill your entire village. He was just mad at the tree. Please, can we talk this through? Good try, Toby, but I think we'll have to be more forceful here. <laughs> Kisame draws Samehada. Itachi appears in front of Fu. Toby falls on the ground in surprise. Whoa, that's too fast. Itachi stares at her eyes with his manga Kyosharing on and Fu passes out. The green wisps of chakra wither away in a split second. Oh, thank goodness Itachi-senpai. The seven tails is really scary. Toby says, awkwardly standing up. Dater stares at Itachi with bloodshot eyes. Good job warning us about the Jinchuriki, Toby. You're a good boy, Kisame says, petting his head. Toby's feet rock back and forth, happy with Kisame's praise. The blue-skinned man looks at Fu and sees she is smiling in a deep slumber. I wonder what she's dreaming about. <laughs> Let's get going, Itachi says. Dater swallows his pride and the four Akatsuki members enter the passage, carrying the two unconscious Jinchuriki. They end up in a large cave with a tall ceiling. The hologram forms of the leader, Konan and Zetsu already wait for them in there. Finally, you're all here, the leader says, summoning the ghetto Mazo. We'll take over a week to seal the seven and the five tails without Kakuzu and Hidan. So be prepared. Don't you worry, we got this leader sent Senpai? Toby says, jumping on top of one of the statue's fingers, the one matching his ring. Always good to have someone to lighten the mood around here, Kisame says, following suit. Itachi jumps up as well, but Deira glares at him. Itachi's words still ring in his ears. Come on, Deira. We don't have time to waste, the leader says. Deira sighs, jumping up to his finger, and the Akatsuki begins the sealing ritual. Naruto and Sakura walk on the nice streets of the Leaf Village. Shikamaru and Ino carry Choji along about 10 meters behind them. The Akimichi boy ate too much barbecue and can barely stand up now. Ino, I told you not to spoil him this much. He can barely walk now, Shikamaru says. He's my boyfriend. What were you expecting? Of course I treat him well. Ino pats Choji in the head. He smiles, not knowing exactly what's going on in a state of semi-unconsciousness after eating an entire cow. You two are a drag. Sakura gives looking at the scene. I'm actually so happy for them. I never thought those two would end up together, but yeah, it makes sense. I guess. Yeah. Do you think the relationship's going to last? Maybe. You need to cheer up, Naruto. I hate seeing you like that. You don't look so good. Sakura, you told me you would help me with anything, right? Yeah. There's one thing I need that you can help me with. Huh? Uh, what is that? Help me talk to Hinata. Naruto, she's imprisoned, guarded by the Ambu, and Lady Tsunari said that we weren't supposed to talk to her. I know, and that's why I need your help. To infiltrate the prison and talk to Hinata. It's not possible. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not you? Naruto stops himself. Sorry, I shouldn't get mad at you. I just need something to do. I, I'm too powerless. I Eno, get off him. I'll take Choji back 
back home, Shikamaru says in the distance. No, I want to take him back to my house. Is it no state to go to your house? Both of them are playing tug of war with Choji's limp body. If you take Choji home, he'll without a doubt ask for more food and you'll give him. And he'll end up in the hospital. Then you won't be able to talk to him or do anything with him for a week. So let me take Choji home. Ino pulls harder on Choji. Do you really want your family to see you dragging your boyfriend around almost unconscious? Fine. Ino lets go of Choji. Don't worry, I'm used to talk to Choji's parents after he eats too much. I always know what to tell them to get him out of trouble. And I won't mention you were the one who put him in that state. Ino blushes. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Just take good care of my boy. Ino kisses Choji's cheek. Shikamaru gives a loud sigh and jumps away, carrying Choji before Ino does anything more embarrassing. She pouts for a second, but her eyes betray her happiness. Going towards Naruto and Sakura, she notices their very serious demeanor. They were talking about something and not really paying attention to her or Choji. Is everything okay, guys? Yeah, it's nothing, Ino. You know, don't worry. Naruto, Ino you know, could help us. Her jutsu is perfect for infiltration. So you actually help me, Sakura? Yeah, I promised, didn't I? If I don't help you now, I'll just be a useless friend. Wait, 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 wait hold on. What are you guys talking about? There's someone Naruto needs to speak with. Unfortunately, this person has been arrested and is currently in the Leaf Village's detainment facility for dangerous shinobi, guarded by the Ambu. I think you could help us to infiltrate the place. It is one of your specialities, after all. And who do you need to talk to, Naruto? I know this sounds weird and I'll understand if you don't help us, but we cannot tell you anything more than Sakura already told you. Oh well, that's a rough mission. The Ambu are trained to catch people trying to infiltrate places. Are you planning on breaking this person out? Because this is an act of treason, you know, more so than just talking to said person. No, I just need to talk to this person alone. And of course, this little mission will stay only between us. Right, uh, of course. Well... You're a comrade of the Leaf Village, Naruto, and a good friend. I've seen your efforts and sacrifices firsthand, so if I don't help you out now, I'll be a useless friend, Ino says, looking at Sakura, mirroring her words. A few minutes later, the three overlook the prison Hinata is held in. They're hiding on top of a house nearby. The prison is a large square building with no windows in the outskirts of the Leaf Village. There is only one entrance where that single Ambu guard is posted. Only one guard in the front door, huh? But no doubt there's more inside, Sakura says. Yeah. Yeah, I can sense a barrier around the building. It will alert them of anyone entering the place that doesn't have clearance, Ino says. Clearance? What do you mean? Yes, the caster of this barrier jutsu imprinted the chakra signature of the Ambu members who are allowed inside the building within the jutsu. Anyone else will be immediately noticed. A simple transformation jutsu won't do then. You have to disguise your entire chakra signature, Ino says, concentrating to sense the chakra of the barrier. Do you think there's a way for us to bypass the barrier? I don't know any jutsus that will disarm the barrier without them noticing and even still they will have sensory types in the building that will feel the presence of a strange chakra so even after bypassing the barrier without being noticed the Ambu members inside would notice us Ino says yeah especially you Naruto you're not really stealthy Sakura says well yeah I know that okay I'm not very good at hiding my chakra presence so is there another way maybe well that's why Ino's here I'm pretty sure her jutsu will work well in this situation yep my Yamanaka hidden jutsu should should bypass their security measures. I have a plan. We just need to wait until the shift of one of those guards ends. And also, Naruto, we're gonna have to tie you up. Tie me up? Why? You'll see. An hour later, an Ambu ninja wearing the characteristic animal mask and dark robes exits the prison building through the front door as another one enters, changing the guard shift. The Ambu member walks through the deserted night streets of the Leaf Village. The Ambu's feet sink down into the ground as though they're being swallowed. Genjutsu. The Ambu member weaves the tiger hand seal, dispelling the Genjutsu. The ground turns back to normal. A dark, ethereal figure throws a punch towards the Ambu's mask, who ducks down. It was a double-layered Genjutsu. The Ambu weaves the tiger seal once more, expelling chakra, but the dark ethereal figure that resembles a young woman does not vanish. This thing is ninjutsu! Sorry about that, but I'll have to be a little rough, the figure says, as it uses the momentum of its punch to grapple the Ambu's arm. The first strike was a fake, only meant to put the Ambu member in an unfavorable position. The dark figure then wraps itself around the Ambu, using the initial arm grapple to subdue any attempt to break free, and completely immobilizes the opponent. Suck 
Sakura jumps down from the rooftop where she cast the Genjutsu and her inner self avatar from. She's carrying Naruto whose body is entirely tied up by rope, arms, legs, and torso. He's also blindfolded and gagged, but even still, he doesn't seem agitated. The Amba member tries to power through the immobilization technique the weird avatar implements, but this Jutsu is absurdly powerful, making it impossible to even perform a hand sign. Ino jumps down behind Sakura, weaving seals. Now, Sakura! Sakura holds Naruto sideways, aligning him with a grappled Ambu member. Mind swapping Jutsu! Ino touches Naruto's paralyzed body. Insane vertigo washes over his senses, as his consciousness literally leaps out of his body. A few seconds later, he was no longer tied up or blindfolded, but grappled by Sakura's Jutsu. Looking to the side, through the slits of an unfamiliar mask, Naruto sees his own body tied up, which begins to shake and attempts to scream. It worked! Naruto says with a voice that isn't his own, muffled by a mask. Sakura dispels her avatar, freeing Naruto and immediately jumps on top of Naruto's real body, restraining him even further. Good, the mind swapping jutsu is in effect. I can keep this jutsu up for about half an hour. You can use the Ambu member's body to infiltrate the prison, Naruto. You should bypass the chakra barrier and their sensory types, as the chakra of this person is registered. We'll keep an eye on your real body that's trapping this Ambu's consciousness, Ino says. Make sure to be back before Ino's jutsu ends, so we can actually restrain the Ambu again and wipe their mind, Sakura says. I will keep in touch with you through the Yamanaka mind link. I won't waste too much time explaining what jutsu you can or can't perform using someone else's body, but you can only do something that you know how to do and that this person is also physically capable of, Ino says. Needless to say, try not to get into any fights and definitely don't hurt anyone, Naruto, Sakura says. Naruto nods, trying to get used to his new body. It's a very strange sensation. He's shorter than he's used to, and there's also something weird. This Ambu member is carrying some type of pouch near the chest that's encumbering his movements. Naruto touches the pouch. Oh, there are actually two of them. They're very soft. Are they carrying water or something? He then touches them from within his robe, trying to get a sense what the Ambo's carrying. They are not pouches, Naruto realizes uttering a scream. They are boobs. It's a woman! This Ambu's a woman! I can't do this! Never in a million years did Naruto think this would be how he touched real boobs for the first time. Oh, come on, Naruto! Get over yourself! Are you five? Just do it already! Sakura says, annoyed, holding down Naruto's real body, which is still struggling. Okay, see you in half an hour, Naruto says, dashing towards the prison. Sakura sighs as she looks at the Ambu disguised Naruto, vanishing amidst the leaf buildings. We're gonna get court martial for this. Not if we don't get caught. Watch part 33 of the rewrites right here. Subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this. And also like this video to help me out. Don't forget the like goal. Let me know what you thought about the episode in the comments down below. And thank you so much for watching.